So I just need to preface this video before the flurry of Elid Fika Gee comments start coming in. But I don't actually know whether this story is true or not. All I do know is that it's an iconic tale from the Blue Light forums of somebody who claims to have abused Ketterman very heavily over a period of several months and subsequently put themselves into several K-holes rather deeply and then ended up getting stuck in a physical dimension that he refers to as the nth dimension or subspace as we're going to find out and it keeps going on a loop back from 2010 to 2017 and it keeps going back and forth so it's, it's bizarre i don't know whether it's real but it surely is an entertaining story and yeah it's just a legendary thread from a seriously iconic forum online for the discussion of mind altering substances and harm reduction etc so yeah buckle yourselves up for this one psychonauts Ketamine has literally let me time travel, but now I'm stuck here. A post by the user Strangelove237 on the Blue Light forums, posted January 31st, 2017. I'm here needing some help with regards to Ketamine. In 2010, I used K quite heavily over a period of several months. I put myself into several Ketamine comas or K holes rather deeply and found myself transcending this physical dimension and going to the nth dimension or subspace. Whilst there, I found my way in front of a large being of light that seemed to be very omnipresent and powerful. I remember begging to be free and communicating with the entity bigger than myself. Since we are outside both space and time, the rules of our physical dimensions do not apply to us. Couldn't remember what transpired there when I got back, but as time goes on, I'm remembering more and more. It turns out in the future, I used ketamine to travel back in time to 2010. I understand this seems unbelievable, but unfortunately for me, this is the truth. Since I do not remember in 2010 what I have done or that I have travelled back, I found myself making the same mistakes that have led me to my current position and have no option but to use ketamine to remove myself from the physical dimension and travel back again to try and correct what I've done wrong. Well, this leads me to my issue. I am now trapped in a time-space loop. I'm not sure how long I've been here for, but I'm continuously travelling back to 2010, only to find myself on a journey back to making the same mistakes and travelling back to 2010 again. I really need some help with this, as I cannot find anyone who will believe me let alone assist me in raking free. Please, if you have any advice you can give me, it would be greatly appreciated. Right, so that was the original post, and everything I'm going to be talking about after this is going to be the OP's replies to certain users. Uh, obviously the responses in this whole thread cover quite a wide variety of uh, opinions. People are trolling him, people completely believe in him, people with theories on how to escape, people are saying he needs mental health advice people are saying you just basically just got a serious ketamine addiction and you're in some dissociative delirium which to be honest that's actually my opinion what's going on here being someone who was addicted to ketamine and in my peak abuse phase i didn't get to a point where i was literally having the experience of time traveling but abusing this substance and being in consistent k-holes can really unground you from reality. Uh, the, the real problem for me was that I really didn't know what was real and what wasn't, and uh, obviously this can be a problem with abusing psychedelics in general, but something about cat, when it turns off your brain and there's no consistent reality in front of you anymore, and if you do this regularly, it really will just detach you from the physical realm, uh, the sober state of human consciousness, and this can be extremely damaging to your uh, mental health and just your whole life in general if you if you keep living in the astral planes or whatever you want to call them all the time it's going to affect you uh, in ways that might not make you very happy to be honest even though there's a lot of value in experiencing altered states if you're doing it too much it removes you from your ba I mean your baseline state of consciousness is your sober human mind and that's where you're going to be most of your life pretty much well the majority li literally the majority of your life uh, so detaching yourself from that too much is going to cause a negative disconnect for many people. And I think 
his experience of going back in time, being in this loop, is a bit of a delusional thought process that's a byproduct of the abuse of the substance. Right, so basically, his first reply is to a user whose name I unfortunately can't say due to uh, YouTube's policy on strong language, but uh, he puts in quite an amusing manner, Strange, where in the hell have you been? I've been sitting here for what seems like forever waiting for you to show up. You were supposed to meet me in 2016, not 2017. Did you forget to wind your calendar or what? Please tell me you remembered to bring the antidote for the Bacala virus that is going to ravage the earth in 6 days, 10 hours, 37 minutes and 14. Nah, 13. No, 8 seconds. Lol. What a jokester this guy is. <laughs> right, so Strange Love replies with Funny, but I'd like to nip this in the bud now. This is not a joke. I don't want this to turn into a laughing stock and the whole thread to go to waste. The fact that you don't believe it doesn't make it not true. It just means you can't understand how it could be possible. If I was sitting in your position, I'd be faced with two options. One, go along with it despite my cynicism and ask for information on how it was accomplished so I too could know how to do it. Or two, make jokes and laugh then disregard it, and possibly miss out on something life-changing. Seems a lot to gain and not much to lose. I'd like to take this opportunity to ask for anyone who might have information into non-local phenomena, experience of ketamine transcendence, or an idea I can use to get out of this quagmire. I'm currently trying to use entropy to create a gateway out. He then goes on to reply to the user called Levels Beyond, who says, Since you spotted the pattern that gives rise to the time loop, you could give up using ketamine and therefore avoid the very chemical that sends you back to 2010 and gets you stuck yet again. <laughs> I'd say that's some pretty good advice, to be honest. Any reason why that wouldn't work? Assuming there are addiction, or belief, or other issues that prevent you from staying sober long enough to avoid another iteration of the loop, there are resources in the sober living section of this website that can help you quit. Strangelove replies with, As I said in my original post, I only used ketamine for several months. I haven't taken it since, and don't have any addiction or dependence. Uh, I'd say that's debatable. Uh, you are correct. In order to complete the loop and close the circuit, as it were, I would need to take it again and voluntarily ask to be sent back. Certain developments, however, have caused irreparable damage to me in the past few months. As such, my options are to either slowly die over the coming two years, or try to go back and redo things differently. I remember the time I leapt back and all I could bring back with me were two words. Push the red button. Uh, those were four words, to be fair. I didn't understand what it meant at the time, and I came back with no memory of any of this and just those two words knocking about in my head. Now I remember everything. And the two words made perfect sense, and would have stopped this whole episode had I understood them. What's interesting uh, about this to me is that I've met a lot of extreme ketamine users over the years and scoured many subreddits of ketamine addiction and just other... Uh, dissociative subreddits and a lot of the people <clears throat> a lot of the people talk like this guy uh, who do seem to be stuck in this uh, endless delusional cycle of being trapped in this dissociative realm of, of, of mind and it really does skew their logical rational mind which I mean you can be too logical <laughs> too logical and rational but uh, you can also be too abstract-minded. I think to have a good understanding of your, your own self and the world around you whilst you're in the sober state of consciousness, you do have to walk the line between both and balance it out. Otherwise, if you go too deep into one, if you go too deep into any one-sided mentality, you oftentimes do sort of lose yourself and lose your uh, grasp on the world around you and what makes you you. And this really does seem like this guy has taken so much care that uh, it's fried his brain in a sense. And I've, I've met a lot of people like this. Even the way he types and, and articulates himself is very similar to people I've met in my own life. <clears throat> and even me at one point as well, so I can relate. Uh, sorry that these videos, uh, that this video isn't like my other ones. I just want to do a little off-the-cuff one. I know many people would be extremely angry at me for doing this because... Uh, most people just want to listen to the, the vivid narration, but uh, I just thought I'd do this for a bit of fun. 
before you scream at me in the comments. So it goes on to say, what frightens me is since I have no concept of how many times this has happened, I don't know how long I've been stuck here. It could be decades, even centuries, if this wasn't already unbelievable enough. Oxlong says, maybe you're stuck here until you complete an important task, Quantum Leap style. Strangelove replies with, perhaps in Quantum Leap style, I'm stuck going back in time eternally until I can take back a message that makes the loop stop. If so, this is one of the reasons I'm trying to create entropy surrounding the event horizon. <laughs> oh my god, he's really, he's really lost me with that sentence. This is, this is like, <laughs> this is some sci-fi level stuff. Honestly, <clears throat> the only two explanations for this is that this is an extremely brilliant troll from someone who takes ketamine and realizes that uh, you can use a drug and sort of blag a story that makes no sense. You can just engineer a story that makes absolutely no sense, but you can use the drug as the justification. Like, oh, well, it's definitely possible because I've taken it. It's happened to me. It's like, this is the problem with, say, with the trip reports. And I do understand why people put, oh, this is a fake story or whatever, because <clears throat> you just don't know, dear. Uh, it's best to not take things on blind faith, but uh, it's also important not to get too emotional about people's experiences on here. It really doesn't matter at the end of the day whether it's true or not. Obviously, it's more valuable if it's true, but for the purposes of entertainment and, I mean, most people just listen to these get to get to sleep, I'd say it's not really a big deal if one in one out of ten reports is completely fake. And I just can't know that for sure. Uh, I do definitely try to filter out the ones that I just think, oh, this guy's completely just chatting shit. But that's why this video is a bit, a bit, a bit of a different style because it's pretty clear that this guy is either super delusional from cat abuse or it's just one very intricate troll. Cream Gravy says, yeah, dude, this is some pretty far out stuff. Why 2010? I don't remember it being a particularly special year. Strangelove replies with, That was when I used ketamine to access a place outside of time and space. When you take ketamine in your K-hole, you first go to a hallucinogenic place, a sort of mind buffer protecting you from leaving your body. Once you realise that all you are seeing is a reflection of your own mind, you leave this space and you exit your body in what's called the astral plane. Here you can travel around the world in what is essentially spirit form, now, <clears throat> I don't actually deny what he's saying here. Uh, astral projection is a very real thing that you can experience, and there's lots of anecdotal evidence to support his claims of flying around the world in this sort of spirit body. Uh, th this isn't something new that he's just making up. Uh, he obviously does understand that this is possible in some sense, and I, I won't doubt that mind-altering substances like ketamine that removes you so much from your baseline sober state could induce experiences akin to this but when he's talking about using entropy trying to create entropy to surround the event horizon in order to escape the eternal loop that's when I, it just loses me and will lose probably most of you when when people have these experiences and they use this jumbled arrangement of word salad and sort of mental masturbation that doesn't really seem to have any depth or uh, any truth behind it really other than their own personal uh, subjective ideas of how reality functions and what's going on with them so yeah just to, just to bear that in mind um so he goes on to say there is a giant white orb there the white light at the end of the tunnel at the end of the tunnel that people see during ndes this could be the moon, it could be the centre of the earth, I'm unsure. I went into this and asked it to set me free. It effectively granted this wish. Now I'm realising it was short-sighted and I do not want it to happen. If I go back and ask to be sent back to 2010 with my memory intact, it should be able to do it, since both of these instances I was outside localised time and space, and I can remember myself coming from 2017 to 2010. <clears throat> The only issue is that in this process my memory is wiped, and all I could hang on to was push the red button, which made no sense to me then. I wonder if he's figured out that that's four words yet instead of two. Clearly not. I appreciate how insane this sounds, and I thank you for, for humouring me thus far. 
If I'd have heard you tell me this back in 2010, I wouldn't have believed you. Interestingly, there was someone just before this. There was there was someone just before this happened who approached me and had the exact same issue. Sorry, but it's really hard to read the way he phrases himself. And there's no barely any commas either. I laughed at them then and thought they were mad. However, the stress of it was tearing their mind apart. They were babbling and frantic, unable to deal with the pressure rationally. So I figured my best bet is to stay calm and calculated if I want any kind of assistance whatsoever. It seems the improbability in this physical universe as something of this magnitude happening is so improbable, it creates a sort of mathematical vacuum, whereby these different events converge, aka calm as a bitch, huh? Would make a fascinating paper for peer review if I could prove any of this or be taken seriously. Uh, another reason this is probably not true, or... The, the bulk of what he's saying, the, the time loop, why the, why the time loop thing isn't, isn't true. I definitely feel like his mind is uh, fried from taking too much care and being dissociated non-stop. That's definitely having an effect on his uh, mental well-being and his perception of reality. But the reason the time loop thing is probably not real is because, honestly, if you were actually stuck in a time loop, I think you'd be fucking losing your mind even harder than this guy clearly is. I know you'd probably try and reach out for help on Blue Light or something or some drug forum, but if you were literally getting stuck in this endless loop and being conscious of it, which he clearly is or else he wouldn't be able to talk about it, mate, you'd be literally insane. I would I would absolutely lose my mind. I'd be crying my eyes out. I wouldn't be able to sleep, eat or function at all. The last thing I'd think of doing is making a thread on Blue Light um, and continuously replying to people. So yeah, the more you read this, the more ridiculous it gets. But who am I to say what's real and what's not? I literally featured a salary report where a guy lives an alternate life of 30 years. Where And, and let me just say that salvia is a very different beast to, to ketamine, where experiences like that are very common. They can, they're, they're very commonly found. I've never actually come across an experience of someone time traveling on ket quite literally, rather than having sort of, you can have it, you can have ideas of this occurring within the, the dissociative state of mind when you take a lot of ketamine or keho, you can have these feelings of time traveling or becoming free of time and space, but actually getting stuck in it permanently doesn't really make a lot of sense, especially because you're always going to come back to baseline once the, the ketamine wears off uh, and your brain starts rewiring itself to to consciously process sober reality. So yeah, this is pretty... It's pretty bizarre. Yeah, there's some guy here, Protovac, the user post. It's not real. Dissociative, dissociatives really mess with your temporal awareness. You aren't time traveling, trust me. Yeah, I would agree here that, yeah, uh, he just literally is having his perception of time and space warped so excessively to the point where he, he sort of is convinced in a delusional sense that this is what's happening. Or he's just a troll. Who honestly knows? Now, I'll probably cut it short because there's a lot of psycho babble in this thread from Strangelove237. Bless the guy. I hope he ended up, ended up sorting himself out because there's a point where he stops replying. We'll genuinely never know what was going on with him, I don't think, unless he somehow stumbles upon this video. That would be a serious mind bender. So, his next significant reply comes in January 31st, 2017 uh, to the user Ordinary Mind saying... What if we live in a universe that obeys the laws of hard determinism? Surely in that case, once you enter the loop, it becomes by ne necessity an infinite loop. Sorry bud, it's your destiny. Destiny. So grab a beer and stop worrying about it. Well, it's easier said than done, ordinary mind. I'm pretty sure I could not be handling this at all, no matter how many beers you have. So Strangelove says, Oh, my favourite post yet. I think this is probably the best advice I could hear right now. Obviously I've panicked about this a few times, but fear doesn't seem to get me anywhere. So for now, I'm taking the hitchhiker's guide's advice to don't panic. Uh, well, I guess at least it worked for him then, because if this guy gave me that advice, I'd, I'd probably be losing my shit, to be honest. Um, Ordinary Mind then goes on to say, he says he used ketamine heavily in 2010, and this belief has presumably been planted during this time. Actually, I didn't realise anything after I came back, says Strange Love. It's only recently I realised what had truly happened there. When I came back in 2010, I put it down as a bad trip. I felt quite freaked out and stopped using the K and never picked it up since. 
It's only more recently that I've started recollecting what went on the other side of the fence, so to speak. Which goes towards confirming that as I approach the event horizon, I remember more and more about what happened happens there. This guy is literally turning into Sam Neill from Event Horizon. Did you really think you could destroy this ship? She's defied space and time. Possibly the most important reply though is to the user Zorkoth who says, It's hard for me to tell if you're being serious because you're coming across as entirely coherent and sensible. Usually people experiencing psychosis come across differently than you. At the same time, I don't think such a thing is possible. I will certainly admit I have felt that such things were possible while on dissociatives. However, I think you should operate with the understanding that right now, you're delusional. Strangelove replies with, I understand what you're saying. I am open to the possibility this is a delusion, and a big part of me really hopes it is, as it would mean I'm not in the pickle I think I am. Unfortunately, I have spent periods of time before telling myself I'm crazy, and I need to ignore this and it will all go away. But that has only made the issues worse, as avoidance doesn't solve any of these problems. Zorkov then goes on to say, So what you're saying is, you believe that in 2017 you took ketamine and travelled back to 2010 and relived 2010 to 2017 all over again, and that this may be a loop that's repeated over and over, and that you're not actually taking ketamine now, you just feel that you'll have to do it in order to go back again. So in this, in the Strange Love's logic, he has to take Ket to repeat the loop to stop him making the mistakes that make the loop happen in the first place, even though the Ket is the thing that's the catalyst for the loop. So yeah, uh, the logic just flies out the window. Um, honestly, I think this is, a, it's a mixture of, I think it's a mixture of delusion and an intric intricate troll in a sense. Uh, oh, but then again, you just don't know. Honestly, the the spectrum of the human mind is is insane. And for me, being a, uh, being a person with quite a large audience uh, that covers a topic that surrounds out there concepts, woo woo stuff, and things that people don't even think about at all. I think people things that people think are completely impossible. You get a lot of uh, people gravitating towards this sort of content. Obviously, 99% of the people who watch my stuff uh, are, re are absolutely sound. I uh, love interacting with them and very insightful and take this seriously and don't get too lost in it. <clears throat> and I respect that because it can be very easy to get lost in this sort of stuff considering it's so out there and requires you to sort of shed your own mind, your ego, and experience things beyond normal perception but there are a lot of people who really are quite unhinged and i get a lot of them messaging me emailing me in the comments um i've been called the mouthpiece of the antichrist by people who think i'm trying to spread some message uh that we need to forget traditional religious values and and use these substances and other means like astral projection to to wipe away traditional cultural ideas of what reality is oh strange honestly you should see my held for review comment section it's this is pretty fucking messed up man <laughs> but uh it is what it is i guess and it's just it's just par for the course with this sort of content <clears throat> so yeah I, I, in a sense this isn't surprising to me hearing that this guy is so utterly convinced of this because i i, I am exposed to people like this on a near daily basis uh, in my comments and my messages and emails uh, yeah, and I've had to deal with some truly unhinged people on my Discord. Uh, I've had to ban ban quite a few of them, which I never have to do uh, usually. But every now and then, someone comes in who clearly has got some serious levels of psychosis and other mental disorders that are quite destructive and uh, almost sociopathic in a sense. I'm not saying this guy's sociopath at all. I just think he could be quite delusional. I'm just starting to think it's not a troll at all. I think this guy is just so utterly convinced of this. Because after this, please read this for yourself. I'm not reading this. This is just insane. He's going on for ages about this serious Lucifer experiment <laughs> that he's been embroiled in. Uh, honestly, it, please read it for yourself because uh, I, I cannot continue to do this anymore. It's frying my brain. But uh, yeah, the last thing he points out to Zorkov is, as Ordinary Mind points out, I never mentioned taking Ketamine in 2017. I'm unsure when I when take it, <laughs> but I have a hunch it's around 2018 to 2019. So now this is an added bit of extra detail where he says he actually took it 
Wait, what? So he's saying he took it in the future because this was posted in posted in early 2017. So he took it one to two years in the future and then went back to 2017, which took him back to 2010. Honestly, this this is making me dizzy now. <laughs> But this is a loop that repeats over in yes, so it would seem from this position anyway. It might just as well be a loop that's set in place, but this is its first time and I can prevent prevent it before it ever transpires. Maybe maybe just stop sniffing kid and it'll stop. Without the work I'm doing at the moment to avoid it, however, it would just repeat infinitely. If I don't do this work now, there's no possibility of ever escaping. Does that make sense? I have to make sure I hedge all bets, so that if this goes on for infinity, at some point along one of the loops mathematically I would find an option to break free, assuming there's a variance in each loop, which is why I'm trying to randomise choices along the way. Holy fuck, this is frying my own bra- I'm gonna get stuck in an infinite time loop tomorrow morning after reading all this. Jesus. <clears throat> I notice, personally in my own life, whenever uh, something really mind-bending gets exposed to my consciousness that my dreams that night are always based upon that including other little subconscious elements of uh, my day-to-day -day life uh yeah i could bet tonight i'll have some weird dream about me taking ket in a dream and then getting stuck in this loop bloody hell well if i don't make a video in the next few days you know what's happened to me um yeah the next post is just goes on for a long time about this shambolic experiment to the alien dimension, um, he goes on about a. He goes on about saying he was in this astral spirit form or whatever, having no tear ducts. But I was screaming, "Why are you doing this?" And I was crying erratically. Presumably, I hadn't quite adjusted to this new form, and so I wasn't actually talking or crying. But the imagination seems to control action in this world, which is why I seem to vetted into realizing th certain things before going there. So the thought of me doing it meant I was crying and screaming at this white orb thing. There is no escape, strange love. You must accept your destiny. <laughs> um, Jackie Rose says, If I may, just finish the TV show Lost. Excellent series, but I think some of the things I learnt in it could apply to you, strange love. To which strange love replies, Lost is a great series. Dharma is very appropriate here. And perhaps you're right. Perhaps I do need to remember to have faith. I wonder how many times he's watched lost in this infinite time loop. He must have watched it before he went back in time. Otherwise, maybe lost is the key to getting him out of it and maybe this guy really is onto something. Oh, and then there's so many people who just sort of are taking it like super seriously from a scientific angle and they're trying to correct him on the terms of fixed fixed delusions uh, because he strangely refers to it as fixated delusions. Fixed delusions only be the delusions are enduring for an extended period of time and do not change in the face of conflicting or contrary evidence. There's always one super, super scientific, pretentious bellend, isn't there? Oh, he's literally li linking him to this definition of delusion from the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disor Disorders 5th Edition. May I'm not being funny, but Strange Love is not going to be reading that. Is he? <laughs> he's too far down the rabbit hole now. Something about these really cringe, um, scientific obsessed people on these forums, they just can't help but splurge their knowledge obsessed lives onto others. It's like, look how much more I know about the human mind and reality than you. And it's like, oh god. Uh, obviously, not, no, no dissing towards scientists who aren't super pretentious hardened egos like the Neil deGrasse Tyson type, most scientists are extremely respectable. But on these forums, uh, Shroomery, Blue Light, DMT Nexus, there's always one or two who clearly have got some serious delusions of grandeur because they've got a PhD in physics or whatever. Uh, hope you know what I mean. And no offence to anyone who does have a... Oh, even Strange Love asks uh, the user Serotonin2a who, who posted that. He put, I'm sorry, what exactly is your PhD in? I'm sorry to tell you I'm not suffering from any form of fixation. I can accept that any of the information here could have been incorrectly perceived either at the time of inter interpretation or at the time of recollection, as has already been mentioned. Honestly, this whole thread is just derailing the more we go on it. Uh, <laughs> uh, yep. Guaguay66 says, Speaking 
physically, it's impossible to travel back in time, like a time machine. Now, spiritually or out of body, it could be possible. Ah, Gua Guy, ask them aliens in the sky because <laughs> Jacques Vallée would tell you that they aren't just aliens, they're time traveling humans from the future. Get on that Jesse Michaels video that he just released, that was some mind blowing stuff. I don't know what's real or not, I just love the whole gamut of explanations that, that, that there are for the crazy things that happen in physical reality, in the mind reality, in the immaterial reality, whatever you want to call it. Um, I just love all these crazy explanations because I find them entertaining. I don't really, I don't really gravitate towards many in particular. Obviously, I, I go on a lot about how I think consciousness, it, it, reality, physical reality isn't necessarily physical, it's just consciousness. Everything just is. I am you, you are me. Reality is one thing, sort of non-dual in a sense, but I think it goes way deeper than that because, again, non-duality is just a human model, a human idea of how reality works, but the actual infinity of reality is way, way different. The grand picture, the grand meta-narrative of what life is goes way deeper than just a human's ability to grasp it, even with something that I'd say is a bit more accurate than most ideas such as non-duality i think the rabbit hole goes infinitely deep and in a sense we may never we may never be able to grasp it but you can experience aspects of what source consciousness or god really is through heightened states of consciousness and even just numinous experiences within your own life um observing something exceptionally beautiful that it pierces the veil of the ego and gets right into your soul and you realize oh this is a fundamental aspect of god it's beauty it's love it's it's creativity but it's still a slither of the infinite power, the infinite love that God truly is. Uh, maybe it is impossible to fully experience that as a human, no matter how much 5-omeo DMT you take over your whole life. Um, so yeah, he replies to Guagai, who said that it's impossible to travel back in time. He would say, oh, I would be inclined to agree with you. My real interest here is, why was I so intent on wanting to leave? Why, out of my body and my pure spirit state, I was so eager to escape. It was like I was a prisoner here and had been there for millennia. And I finally had seen my chance to make a break for it. What was the large white orb entity? To Demiurge, Lucifer, Shambhala. Many people say they see it with near-death experiences. Huh. Maybe the large white orb entity is God rather than anything negative. I love how some people instantly jump to the idea that uh, the whiteness that people experience in NDEs is something negative when surely this white infinite singularity is more akin to God than the Demiurge. Uh, but you know what? You know what some of these people are like. Why is there a grid around the planet? Is it keeping us in or something out? One of the triggers for these memories was reading the Matrix series by Val Valerian, a former CIA operator who describes a lot of what I saw in his books. Uh, obviously, the CIA did a lot of uh, investigation into astral projection, uh, psychedelics' ability to open up parts of the brain that could access information from the Russians, um, accessing clairvoyance, uh, remote viewing, etc. This is very real stuff, and as we all know, anyone who's really into the UFO scene knows about Project Blue Book the uh, and the actual stuff that was going on behind Project Blue Book, the actual investigation of literal UFOs, because I'm not going to beat around the bush anymore. UFOs are real. They're out there. We don't know what they are. People think they're time-traveling humans from the future that happen to evolve to a point where they're really small and sort of have big eyes to interface with reality better, have bigger heads be, uh, for greater... Well greater extent of having a brain to interface with reality even deeper um, and that these these flying saucers are actually time traveling uh, not even ships in a sense it's it's like a meta material that can bend space and time to travel anywhere that you want I don't know what's real I'm just telling you that there's things out there that you don't know what they are and they defy physics so it's not I wouldn't say it's impossible to travel back in time it's probably impossible to travel back in time in the idea of how humans understand it, like in the grandfather paradox idea, it's like, oh, you can't go back to this point and do this because you could do something that completely changes that timeline. But mate, there's probably fucking infinite timelines. I don't think there's just one universe. 
it seems pretty ridiculous for me to it seems like there's a lowercase universe the one we're in and then there's the uppercase universe which is like god which contains all of everything and then there's within that there's in like an infinite cascade of multiverses this is just me speculating but it's a lot of fun to speculate so yeah don't take it too seriously kids because i don't really know what's going on i just i just love talking about this sort of stuff but anyway i would suggest you read the rest of the thread uh it, it not as many interesting things are said but uh there's a lot of stuff said by other users that is quite fascinating um but uh, i could go on forever i don't want this video to ramble on longer than it has done but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this uh, this funny off the cuff uh, report. Uh, if you want me to do more stuff like this, there's lots of other posts like these on stuff like for, uh, forums like Blue Light and Shroomery and etc. So if you like this, let me know. And what do you think's really going on? Please tell me because I really want to know. Otherwise, I might have to take one of the old dissociatives, get in my own infinite timeline loop, and try and save Strange Love from his endless suffering although to be fair he sounds like he's accepted his fate so maybe maybe this is the way to go boys uh, don't be taking drugs kids really bad for you bye